Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry about that. I was actually setting up for you guys so that uh, you guys can bake along with me. If you guys can, these are gonna be the ingredients that we're gonna need. We're gonna need flour, we're gonna need uh, baking sodas, sugars, eggs, and some chocolate chip. Can you guys hear me well? Let me know, I am using my mic. Hello, Cynthia, hello, Rick, hello, um, uh, Pipgorn. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me well? Let me know, please. Audio is great. Hippie Longshanks, hello. Rhode Island Eats, hello. Uh, Honey Badger, I got bread in the oven, or I jump in on this. I can hear you. Okay, great. RT Scott, sounds good. All right, guys. So without further ado, let's get started for today. As you can see here, we have the uh, Victoria skillet. So let me tell you guys a quick little story. Um, for those of you that have been keeping up with the channel, I did post uh, a picture, I want to say, of the skillet itself. So I did notice something, and um, I had some issues. Uh, long story short, the cooking surface uh, original seasoning, after I gave it a wash with just soap and water, it came off. The side walls were okay. The skillet itself were okay, but the the cooking surface, uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but the uh, seasoning came off. And uh, their directions does say that uh, just you know before use, give it a light uh, wash with soap and water. And I did, and I I did use a sponge to scrub a little bit on the sides. And but once I was scrubbing, I noticed that the seasoning was coming off. So. Not to say that it's a bad or defective skillet, but just so you guys know, it is it is a uh, the cooking surface was uh, pretty much all the seasoning came off. So at that point, I just scrubbed it all, and I did no chain mail. I didn't do any of that. I just used a sponge, soap, and hot water. But that is about it. So with that being said, hello to Cynthia, Adam. Uh, hello, Adam. Rocket uh, Rocket Caver says, too slick. Yeah, it is slick. So Victoria Cast Iron has actually not necessarily done something like this before. So for them, it might be something new. And obviously, uh, the, the seasoning didn't adhere very well. So all of it just pretty much came off. But everything else on the underside and all that, it, it's fine. Outside of the skillet, it's fine. It's just the cooking surface. And it really is just the cooking surface because the side walls were okay. <clears throat> but like I said, guys, we are doing a skillet cookie, and this is actually a recipe from Lodge. And uh, I, I fell in love with this recipe because of how simple it is. It's really simple, and you can get great results with this recipe. So like I said, we need about 240 grams of flour or two cups. We need, um, the recipe actually says three quarter cup of sugar. Uh, granulated sugar, but I I feel like that's a lot of sugar. So I only did uh, half a cup. So instead of three quarter cup, I did half a cup of granulated sugar. I also did half a cup of, uh, I didn't do dark brown sugar. I did light brown sugar, which it's still okay. Uh, I also did eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to also need one teaspoon of baking soda one teaspoon of salt, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, uh, 10 ounces of bittersweet chocolate chunks, which I'm not gonna do. I'm just gonna do the chocolate chips, uh, and half a cup of coarsely chopped walnuts or pecans, which is optional. And honestly, guys, when it's optional, you, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Um, I, I'm fine with a basic chocolate chip cookie. And then, you know, if you want, you can do vanilla ice cream. So with that being said, that is the recipe from Lodge, and all of this is going to be done in the skillet. So with that being said, let's move to the kitchen so we can get this going. But 
these are our ingredients, guys. We're going to get going to the kitchen. So I'm going to bring you guys along with me. As you can see, the seasoning, I had to re-season this myself. Uh, and I just did a stovetop seasoning to get some of that back. But yeah, it's a shame. It's a little too slick. But other than that, so far, I've used it a couple times now and it works great. I'm going to give it a quick rinse and then we're going to get it on the stovetop. And we're going to, on a low temperature, we're going to melt. We're, all, we're actually, I, I forgot to mention this, but we're going to need two sticks of butter, un, unsalted butter. All right, giving it a quick rinse, and we're moving on to uh, the stovetop. Like I said, something uh, on the light, so nothing uh, on a high heat. We're going to need something low. So uh, here we go. And for me, it would be like a power level two. Um, it's not induction, but it's uh, an electric stovetop. But there we go. So now I'm going to get my unsalted butter. I'm going to move you guys here so you guys can see a little bit better. Hopefully everybody's doing great. Hello, Jan Stewart. Welcome. And I will catch up with the chat in a minute. I am reading her guys' comments. I'll catch up in a minute. Let me get uh, all this situated. <clears throat> and honestly, you can have the butter at room temperature to better incorporate it. And honestly, you wouldn't even necessarily have to heat up the pan. But um, it's going to be a very, very low heat right now. We're just going to place two sticks of butter in there. What I'm going to do is actually let it preheat on a uh, level two on my stovetop. Um, but let me actually grab my computer so I can see what the chat is talking about. Bear with me, guys. All right. So like I said, we're going to let that preheat for about two minutes. I think so far we got a minute in. Hopefully is everybody's doing great. Hopefully everybody's having a, a good afternoon. I know that in the uh, East Coast, it is 9 o'clock, I want to say. So if you guys are in the East Coast, thank you guys for tuning in. All right, let's see. What are you guys talking about? You guys want to see the skillet real quick? Little um, tour. I am going to post the unboxing. And uh, but yeah, this is the skillet itself. Victoria cast iron is made actually not in the USA. Victoria cast iron is actually made in Colombia, uh, Medellin, Colombia. So for those of you that are interested, uh, Victoria cast iron is actually fairly popular. Um, they have a good, pretty much a, like a good reputation with people here in the US. And uh, I want to say this is her first time venturing into the boutique or the high end market. And uh, I'll be honest, guys, this retails for a high price, very, very high, considering that you can get something here in the U.S. for a lot cheaper, but very expensive. Um, but it's got a lot of cool things to it. And I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll talk about it in, in a minute, but just so you guys know. Uh, What's up, Date says, I think he said Victoria. Yes, I did say Victoria. It is called Victoria Cast Iron. And um, they are very similar to Lodge. They were actually uh, they were actually started in 1939. I think they started making toy cast iron toy like soldiers uh, and things of that nature. And then they transitioned into other like other type of cookwares like a grain mill. Uh, I want to say a, a tortilla press. And then they started doing cookware like these skillets. And uh, you know they've they've been around since 1939. So 
um, they've they've done actually really great and they've done a lot of um, you know they've done well for themselves. So let's just put it that way. Jan Stewart says, "I got my wife a Victoria griddle." Yeah, these uh, Vic like I mentioned earlier, Victoria has really great products. And a lot of people love the handles. Um, if you guys want to know, I guess we can talk a little bit about the pan itself. So <clears throat> the pan is actually lightweight considering the size. This is a 12 inch, but um, it is actually fairly thin casted. So the sidewalls are a lot thinner. It has been CNC machined on the sidewalls and the cooking surface. Um, just overall, like the handle, it's actually really well designed. This brass piece here, uh, you can actually detach it, and it is solid brass. So it has one solid piece here and one solid piece on the bottom and it has two uh screws down here and they provide you tools and extra screws in case you lose it but um this thing is actually pretty cool i thought for a minute it was just like not solid i thought it was just a little piece of you know like tin but no it's actually a solid piece uh one piece here and one piece on the bottom um so that's actually pretty cool this actually i've i've already cooked with it so um this stays really really cool it doesn't get hot um, the pour spouts are pretty like industrial looking. They look great. The, the helper handle tab is a great size. And like I mentioned, the weight, it's not bad at all. So a pretty decent and a pretty awesome skillet. Although I'm not very, uh, the price is just insane. These are, I, I think they retail for about 225 for this. They also have like a, a non-polished version. Um, so you can either opt for the polished version, which would be this, or a like a micro textured, which this is actually micro textured. Um, there is no roughness to it. It's it's extremely. I don't know if you guys have seen um, what's the brand Burrow Furnace, or if you guys have any Burrow Furnace, but the finish on this is exactly like Burrow Furnish Furnace. So uh, they they do like uh, I think like a metal bead blasting. I think that's what it says on the box. So they bead blast it. And it provides it like extremely smooth finish. Like it's not rough. Yeah, you can hear it, but it's not rough. But anyway, let's get going. That's uh, I'll do. Uh, I'll upload the video for the Victoria skillet um, tomorrow. I'm gonna upload one tonight for you guys. After this, I'll, I'll uh, after the live, I'll upload another one for the uh, Santa Barbara Forge skillet. Which uh, if you guys have seen one of the reels that I've done, the shorts, I do feature it there. But as I mentioned, we got some uh, butter here. It is unsalted. We're going to use two sticks. What we're going to do is just let these melt. So there's one. And this seems like a lot of butter, but guys, cookies were never meant to be healthy. And that is why they're so, you know, they're so delicious because they got all these awesome flavors. They got all these awesome ingredients. So there we go. Two sticks of butter we're going to let those melt once they're fully melted we're going to shut it down and then we're going to go over there and start mixing some ingredients <clears throat> let me know if you guys hear me well if the mic is too far or too close to me i do have uh my mic here all right let's see let's read some comments Rick Stumbaug says, how much are they running? Uh, they're, I think, like I actually I did say, I think 225 US dollars. So 225. I mean, like I said, very expensive. You can get yourself a um a Smithy Ironware 12 inch for I want to say 180, 190, I think. Unless prices have gone up, guys. Um, so yeah, it's expensive. Let's see, Papa Dan. Oh, he says, uh, hello, Shadow Walker. Hello, Shadow Walker. Uh, what's up, date? Sandpaper is cheap, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, technically, you can get yourself a lodge, what, for like uh, $35, $35 and a 12 inch lodge and sand it down. And um, I've never done that. Maybe that's something I might do during the summer. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do that to one of the, I'll, I'll purchase a lodge and do that and see you know, how well the uh, uh, the pan performs and how well it holds seasoning after it's been sanded down. I don't know if you guys are interested in, in me doing a video like that. I mean, there's a ton of those videos out there, but 
I, I guess I could be a little bit more um, informative in the sense of how well the seasoning will adhere or how well it does with the uh, slickness, if it's actually, you know, better, if uh, eggs are going to stick more to a standard lodge skillet that hasn't been sanded down or if it's going to do better in the uh, sanded down version. We can do something like that for you guys. Papa Dan says, the only Victoria that I've seen was rough. Is that normal? <clears throat> yes. Um, I, want, I, I do have a 12-inch, the standard version. And uh, I was actually mentioning uh, on Instagram that that was actually one of the first skillets that I did a review. And I want to say that was the first video that I posted on my YouTube channel was the 12-inch Victoria uh, cast iron skillet. And I just did, I think, shallow frying some, some uh, chicken tenders. And uh, I think that was the first one. So, yes, um, one of the things that I did notice, you know, right out of the opening it and, and getting it in my hands was how rough it was. And I'll be honest, that texture is like way rough, a lot rougher than the lodge. And uh, getting it seasoned up was actually very difficult because at the time I didn't have that much knowledge. I was using um, standard paper towels, which, you know, that's going to leave a huge mess of lint everywhere. Um, but the blue shop towels actually do work a lot better. Um, I, I don't like that the blue shop towels have that tint to it. So I tend to use the unbleached, or I don't know, I guess they, they would be bleached, bleached uh, shop towels, which work just as great. But um, if you guys don't want to use the blue ones, you can use a, a um, I know a lot of people use bandanas. But it's up to you, whatever you guys want to use. But if you get a good seasoning on those Victoria skillets, uh, they work just as great as a lodge, and they're fairly priced as well. They're around the same price as a lodge skillet. Jan Stewart says, futuristic, futuristic skillet. Yeah, if, um, you know, I want to say, yeah, it's different. It almost kind of gives me the vibe of a Finex <clears throat> and a Stargazer. So the, the inside is almost as smooth as a Stargazer, and obviously, you know, the little... Uh, brass piece here and and just it's like a mashup between a stargazer and a fine x uh skillet so if you guys are interested or if you guys would want both of those together technically this skillet is similar to those two put into one uh papa dan says cynthia when does howling hero i think you guys are in what louisiana Cooking with Bobby Joe says, yep, a little later after 9 p.m. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, guys. It is it is late out in the East Coast. Cynthia, I hear, uh, hear fine when it's coming in. Wind is howling here. Um, let's see. I was told that actually, and this is Shadow uh, Walker XM. I was told that they actually used to turn them on a lathe so the surface was milled, not sanded. Uh, these These here? Is that what you're talking about, uh, Shadow Walker? This one here is technically a new product for Victoria. Um, now, if you're referring to Lodge, Lodge used to actually mill their skillets as well back in the 60s, 70s. I think that was around the last time that they stopped uh, milling. Technically, around the 80s, 90s is when they stopped because they wanted to mass produce their skillets in the sense that they wanted the seasoning to hold uh, that way they they were sending and shipping out seasoned cast iron instead of you know a, a cast iron that was um, that had a wax coating and you had to season yourself and they transitioned from the, that from this shipping out bare iron to shipping seasoned iron oh uh, smooth vintage pans yeah um, yeah they were uh, on a lathe because obviously CNC machining wasn't really a thing back in the early uh, 1900 so yes they used to mill them with a lathe and i know uh guys that uh um i've seen i don't know if you guys have seen or follow uh lancaster or lancaster i think that's how you pronounce it lancaster uh cast iron they actually use like similar like a like a vintage style cnc machine but it's not really a cnc machine it's more of a like a huge like mill and they mill them down really nicely. And they do something similar to the vintage cookware. So if you guys are interested, Lan Lan how do you say it? Lancaster, because that's how you pronounce it. I was actually corrected by one of my viewers. It's Lancaster. They, uh, that's how they usually do their smooth surfaces. 
Shan Stewart says, I use the blue shop towels. They're pretty tough uh, even when wet. Yeah, the blue shop towels are great. Like I said, I like those as well. But I tend to uh, look for the white, like uh, almost uh, the paper towel looking ones. But they're also shop towels and they're really, really tough. All right, so as you can see we here, we've pretty much got it all melted. So what I'm going to do now is just let the residual heat uh, finish melting the butter. I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to let this cool down a bit. And we're going to add the um, flour. We're going to add everything else. So you guys can see what uh, what this is about. And this recipe, guys, is actually, you know, something you guys can do with either, you know, if your wife, your husband, um, kids. This is like something that's so easy. And uh, it's almost like uh, something you can do with, like I said, with family. Uh, you guys want to have like a little, uh, uh, I guess you could say like craft night, making baking cookies or baking a skillet cookie is going to be a great one. So um, this is probably something that I want to do with my wife's family. Uh, I Hopefully, because uh, hopefully I can get them to, uh, you know, all gather up and we can do uh, skillet cookies. Um, they, we got a lot of kids in the, on my side and on my, my wife's side. So I feel like they would enjoy this. Yeah, see, so I already um, <clears throat> I already cut the heat, and uh, you can see the, the butter is pretty much all melted down. So what I'm going to do now is actually transfer the skillet over to the table, and I'm going to use these um, these little pot holders from Smithy, these leather pot holders. And uh, since the skillet, I mean, it's, it's warm, but it's not hot. We're going to transfer it over there, and we're going to continue mixing on uh, the table. Actually, now that we're here, so what we're going to do is actually preheat the oven to 375. So I'm going to do that now. Preheat the oven, and we're going to move over to the, uh, the dining table. So bear with me, guys. Let me get my stuff situated and move over to the table. <clears throat> Forgot to drink water and my throat's all dry right now. All right, we're moving. Hopefully I don't knock anything down or drop this. I'd be, uh, that would be horrible. All right, don't wanna get you guys all dizzy. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's good enough right there. All right. <clears throat> That good, guys? Can you guys see well? I'll move it a little bit. You guys can see. And uh, I'm not going to make the same mistake as uh, if you guys were here for the live of, uh, I think it was the end of or mid February, where it was, uh, I was trying to do some uh, beignets and it was just a complete disaster. I, I, I'm not going to make that same mistake. So, what I did was actually I baked uh, this recipe yesterday to uh, give it a test run. And then I was like, okay, this is fairly easy. This is something that I feel like, um, uh, you know, a beginner can do. And uh, that's why I wanted to share this recipe. All right, guys, <clears throat> let's see what you guys are talking about. Let me talk to you while this cools down a little bit. I don't want to, you know, cook the eggs in the butter either. Actually, what I should do is actually, let's add the sugars because you do, you want those to incorporate in the, uh, in the butter. So we're going to add the sugar. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we're going to add the, uh, this is a uh, half a cup. The recipe calls for a three quarter cup, but we're going to do half a cup of uh, light brown sugar instead of dark brown sugar. I don't think there's a massive difference. If you guys know if there's a difference, let me know. And then we're also going to do a half a cup of granulated sugar. So there's that. And we're going to mix it around and incorporate this. And that's why I'm saying that this recipe should be easy. And it should be something that you guys can do with family, your kiddos, husband, or wife. It should be even uh, something you can do on a date. Which uh, now that I'm thinking, I really need to take my wife on a date. It's been a while. It's, it's hard when we're sick 24-7. We've been sick. I want to say almost every month, 
my kids go to school and uh, right now it's like a breeding ground of just pure viruses. So it has not been fun whatsoever. And I feel like uh, a lot of my family members have been sick as well. So I feel like everybody's just getting sick, not including, that's not just us. So that kind of gives me a little bit of relief. I feel like, like, uh, like, you know, I think to myself, is there something wrong with us? You know, are we just, we have a weak immune system, but uh, my sisters are sick and uh, my wife's side of the family is sick. So uh, it gives me a little bit of comfort, even though they're sick. It just lets me know that we're not just the only ones. Hopefully you guys have been okay. All right, guys. So that's, I think, good enough for now. We're going to let this cool a tiny tad. We don't want, like I said, we don't want to burn, um, sorry, cook the eggs while we uh, mix everything and incorporate everything together. So with that being said, let me read some of your guys' comments. Uh, Corey Clark says, pay attention, kids. Let's see. Uh, Hello, Nesha's River catfishing. Uh, not too late. We just kind of started. We're doing a skillet cookie all prepared inside the skillet. So we're going to mix the flour in there. Uh, we're going to mix the eggs in there. And we already did the butter, the sugars. We're going to add the salt and the, um, uh, what is it, baking powder? No, baking soda into the flour. Which reminds me, I do need a... Uh, vanilla and i like using this one my wife bought me this one and it actually smells great so if you guys are interested it is a organic madagascar bourbon vanilla extract rodel it's a good brand rick says luis you need to take victoria out for a date night i really do i have We've been sick 24-7 that we haven't even had time to go out. And it's a shame because I, I, I know that she needs a, a date night. So hopefully soon, once the kids are better, I can take them to uh, somebody so they can watch my kids and we can go out. But hopefully you guys are doing well. Hopefully nobody is really sick. I hope you guys are healthy. Um, I know Papa Dan uh, usually has uh, something going on with, uh, I think you're having issues with your eye or your vision. But um, we're wishing you, uh, you know, a healthy recovery if you are going through things like that. Let's see what else. Jan Stewart, I had a friend's wife wash and reuse paper towels in Ziploc bags. Wow. I mean, I, I, I don't know about reusing paper towels, especially if you're, you know, picking up, you know, something that can possibly harbor bacteria. I, I don't know if that's a great idea, but it all depends. I mean. People can be, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, not hoarders, but, you know, people tend to save money or try to save a dime here and there. And that's all great, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily work for everything. Let's see. Uh, I sanded one. So Shadow Walker XM says, I sanded one, did not like the outcome, would be interested in trying milling one for scientific purposes only, of course. <laughs> Oh man, if I could get my hands on a milling like a machine, I would mill some of my uh, lodge just to also, I want to see how well it would do. Um, I know there's actually someone on Etsy uh, that does milling and the type of milling that he does, you get some of those vintage swirls. So um, I don't know exactly what kind of milling machine he uses, but you can see the swirl marks and it looks great. And I've been tempted to send one to him, but I think he charges about 80 to $90. So uh, maybe I might consider doing that, sending, shipping one of my lodges to him and, and having him mill it and then, you know, giving a review to you guys with uh, the results. I don't know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Let's see, what else? <clears throat> I am reading some, some of your guys' comments, so don't think that I'm not uh, trying to do, or, you know, that I'm just sitting, standing here. But with that, let's actually just move on. Papa Dan uh, says, my 10-year-old grandson and I made cast iron chaos's huge cookie on Monday. He enjoyed it, so we try, we'll try. we try this, your recipe this weekend, weather permitting. I hope so. I hope you guys give this a try. And with that, let's actually continue. So what we're going to do is actually add the, um, we're going to incorporate the salt into our flour. 
And uh, we're looking at two cups or 240 grams of flour. And this is just all purpose flour. We also got some baking powder. We got one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt. And what we're gonna do is actually grab a, uh, I need a whisk to stir that together. So bear with me. All right, so we're gonna whisk that together. Give it a good, give it some good whiskey business. I think that's uh, Joshua Wiseman's, uh, not catchphrase, but he does say that whiskey business. We're gonna give it some whiskey business. All right, so there's that. Now at this point, I think it's okay for me to pour this in here, and then what I'm gonna do is actually whisk up the eggs. So we're gonna pour this in here. Next, we are going to beat the eggs and then incorporate that in a minute. And it says to lightly beat the eggs. So they don't have to be fully beaten or anything like that. You don't want them too airy. So those are two eggs. All right, so let's give this mixture a mixing where I'm hoping that the flour kind of takes away some of that residual heat from the butter. That way when I incorporate the eggs, we don't have any issues of the eggs turning into, well, scrambled eggs. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. You don't want a scrambled egg cookie. So this right now obviously looks like a giant mess. Yesterday my son says, Dad, what are you doing? That looks like a horrific uh, science experiment. And I said, no, this is actually something delicious that you're going to eat later. And he said, no way I'm going to eat that. And I said, joke's on you. You're going to eat it. <laughs> And he did. He's like, Dad, that was one of the best cookies I've ever had. So what I'm going to do is actually add the, uh, you know, a dash of vanilla into the eggs. Since I forgot to mix it into the butter first. Give it some whiskey business. Like I said, fairly easy. Right now it looks like a giant mess, but believe me, it'll come together. So now we add the eggs. And we're going to incorporate everything together at this point. So do your best to get this all incorporated quickly. That way you avoid your eggs turning into, well, scrambled eggs. But yeah, my son saw this and he's like, oh my God, that looks disgusting. And I was like, nope, you're going to think it's the best thing ever. Sure enough, like I said, he tried it and he said, dad, that was really good. So I want to say this is probably the easiest skillet cookie that I've ever done. Uh, I've done other recipes. Obviously, I do it in a bowl and then just uh, I have to, you know, let the cookie dough uh, cool a bit and leave it in the refrigerator. And like there's more steps with this. It's like just dump in there and just mix all together and go. And you don't even have to oil your pan anymore. Just wipe down the edges after you mix everything together and you're, you're set. Stick it in the oven. Let it bake for about 10 minutes because honestly, it takes about 10 minutes. Um, the recipe actually calls for, uh, I think, 15 to 20 minutes. So I, I did see, though, yesterday when I baked this, that it was actually done within the 10-minute mark. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to let it go for 10 minutes, and then I will show you guys the end result. So as you can see, now it's starting to look like actual cookie dough instead of that nasty-looking mess that we had in the beginning. And to be honest, I did this three times. The first time that I did it, it was a giant mess. And I was like, oh, that does not look good. I still baked it anyway. And uh, thank goodness it still turned out great. But it wasn't the best. It didn't taste like the flavor was just off and the, the, my ratios were off. And I think I measured or I might have weighed in the, the uh, flour incorrectly because I was adding more flour because there was so much butter. It was just a giant mess. So the first time that I did it, it did not work for me. Second time I did it, it turned out great. And this is my third time. So. You know, trial and error, and I'm doing this for you, for you guys, so that way you guys know, uh, you know the things that you should avoid and the things that you should do. All right. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long. It all comes together. So after that, we're going to pretty much uh, move it around, get it to every 
All right, guys. Sorry about that. Where did you guys cut out? Jan Stewart says, it froze like the weather here. Old-fashioned coffee pot. Hey, Rick. Uh, Shelly Bula says, frozen. Shoot. Buffering. Sorry, guys. Having video trouble. So let me know. Can you guys see now? Let's see. I'm going to move my hands around here. Can you guys see or is it still frozen? Can you guys hear me? Hippie Longshanks says we're back. All right. So where did it cut out, guys? Well, I was putting in the chocolate chip. Hopefully you guys saw that. And it does call for, uh, I want to say, I think, a half a cup of chocolate chips. But just place in there to your liking, however many chocolate chips you guys like. And I feel like I'm going overboard, but, well, sometimes uh, that's okay. I, 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 yesterday, my cookie that I made yesterday was, uh, I felt like it didn't have enough chocolate chip. So this time we're adding a lot of chocolate chip. And I'm not going to use all of it because we're going to have some left over. All right. So there we have it, guys. I don't know exactly where I left out, but, or, you know, it, where it uh, froze. Well, RT Scott says spreading the batter. Okay. Yeah. So you guys didn't miss much. Miss much. Oh, my goodness. I can't even speak. You guys didn't miss much. All I was doing while I, after I spread the, the batter, uh, all I did was just put, place the uh, chocolate chip in there. And uh, what I'm using is just dark chocolate chip, 60% uh, quitted cacao. I don't know how to pronounce it. The, whatever the si scientific word for chocolate is. And I'm using that. But if you guys like semi-sweet, you guys can go that route or bittersweet, whatever you guys prefer. Now, one little tip that I do have here for you guys is that after this bakes, what I like to do is... Uh, add a little bit of flaky salt after I take it out of the oven, and believe me, that gives it a, a awesome taste with the sweetness and the saltiness. So that's uh, that's a little tip for you guys if you guys want to take it. All right. So what I'm going to do now is just actually clean the sides, and we're going to place it in the preheated oven that it has been preheating at 375. And we're just going to wipe down the edges here getting rid of uh, any excess sugars or, or, you know, anything, kind of making it pretty, presentable. And there we go. And there we have it, guys. A skillet cookie in the skillet. So we mixed everything, prepped everything in the, uh, in the skillet itself. And here we have a closer view for you guys. And the skillet uh, is actually still nice and warm. So there we have have it now let's go to the oven so i'm gonna bring you guys along with me i don't want to get you guys dizzy sorry for all this moving all righty and at this point we're just going to place it in the oven for three at 375 for about uh 10 minutes so let's set a timer for 10 minutes no i'm not 30 Come on. Now well, let's do 12. Just to be on the safe side. All right, 12 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to showcase the, uh, actually not necessarily showcase, but we're going to talk about the, the castaway carbon steel skillet for a minute so you guys can see. So bear with me while I grab it. <clears throat> All right, guys. So if you guys haven't heard of Castaway, they are a carbon uh, steel manufacturer. And uh, I did do a review on them, I want to say maybe two months ago. And I did say a lot of things about them. Not necessarily bad, but things that they just needed to uh, address. And uh, the cool thing is, is that they actually listened. And it wasn't just me, I think, that was uh, telling them about these uh, little, not necessarily issues, but these little things that were happening with their skillets. 
So one of the first things that I do want to mention is that it is a single piece. Like it is stamped out and pressed all in one piece. There is no rivets. There's no welding. The handle is just attached to the to the pan by a single piece. So with that being said, um, one of the biggest things about this skillet is that it, it actually, <clears throat> the handle itself, hopefully you guys can see some of that. It has a, it has movement. So if you, you know, push it down hard enough, you can actually bend it. Uh, there isn't necessarily a good uh, strength structure here. And uh, with the new update I saw on Instagram, he posted a video, uh, the uh, designer and creator, he posted a, a video of the updated handle design, which is now somewhat like the, uh, the Debouillet. Uh, it's almost like a um, little smiley face. Or, and let me show you guys what I mean. Let me grab one of my skillets. <clears throat> so uh, their updated handle now has uh, like this. You can't even really tell with this one. But um, it has a curvature. So the new one is going to have that curvature which in turn is actually going to help with the uh, structure. So it doesn't necessarily have that weak point right here where it can bend, which I feel like, you know, is, is a great, uh, it's a great addition to his skillet. And I think it's going to make it better. Also, I did know, note that uh, he mentioned that he's going to also file or pretty much bevel the edges here because they are kind of sharp. Um, but other than that, he has a great skillet. And I know he already made a, um, a 10 inch skillet which is this so he did a dual handle 10 inch skillet that's this size dual handle and um i have been thinking thinking about uh getting one of those and doing a review i haven't done so yet uh, because obviously we have a lot of other cookware that i'm trying to uh get videos out with and uh once once i you know um get those videos out for the other cookware that i have uh, in line uh, I will consider getting another castaway or possibly even getting another 10 inch and doing a review on the updated version uh, and letting you guys know what I think about the updates. But what do you guys think? Do you guys uh, like carbon steel cookware? I'm trying to, I'm going to read your guys' comments. You guys have any questions? Let me know. Let's see. Adam says, almost got the castaway. I went with matte fur and never looked back. Yeah, matte fur is, I have the matte fur. And honestly, that that uh, carbon steel skillet is slick as can be. And I want to say I got the updated version because mine did actually come in a bag. Uh, I do follow Uncle Scott's kitchen. And Uncle Scott uh, was saying that the updated ones weren't going to have the wax coating on it. So they were going to ship it in a bag. So mine was actually shipped in a bag. And I haven't really checked the underside, but uh, I think they also added a, uh, what do they call it? Um, and, you know, it, it is, uh, what's the word? My goodness, I'm having a trouble thinking about it. But anyway, they add that indentation in the middle to prevent it from warping. I forget what the word is, but they add that. So um, in the new map first. So I want to say that I might have a new one, but mine mine doesn't have the stamp on the handle. So I was questioning whether mine was a updated model or not, but I think mine might be. Shadow Walker XM says, I have a few pieces, but much prefer cast iron. Yeah. And I'll be honest, guys, I right now I'm having fun cooking with uh, carbon steel cookware. Um, but my first love has always been cast iron, and I love the vintage pans. They work, they work like a dream. They're as slick as can be, and I love modern cookware as well. Lodge, Lodge will for always be one of my favorites. Um, they just produce a lot of great stuff, a huge variety, and always at a great price. How can you beat Lodge? You can't beat Lodge at those with those things that Lodge has has made for themselves. They have a huge following because of how great they are. And uh, I'm one of those firm believers that Lodge doesn't produce anything bad. They've done uh, great products um even their seasoning isn't bad and i'll be honest guys i've heard a lot of you say well the seasoning on on lodge isn't that great 
but I don't think it's necessarily the seasoning. It's their seasoning is actually, you know, actually really good. What's, you know, I think you guys might be confusing it with is the uh, just the texture of the the skillet itself. You know, they don't they do actually, I think, pass it through a tumbler. So um, it's not like super rough. Like if you were to grab and like, I'm not trying to say that Chinese cast iron is bad or anything of that nature, but Chinese cookware is rough and it feels like sandpaper. I've said it many times in my reviews, Chinese cast iron, um, they might skip that step where they pass it through a tumbler. And uh, when you pick one of those up, it's like grabbing sandpaper. Lodge does not feel that way. Lodge feels pebbly. And like I said, that has nothing to do with the seasoning, but a lot of people say, well, their seasoning is horrible. I, I don't think so. I think their seasoning is great. Corey Clark says, I found a three-notch lodge chicken fry today for 15 bucks. That is a great deal. Three-notch lodge. Yeah, those are great. I think the single notch, the three-notch, and even the Arc logo lodges are probably like the best ones, even though the three-notch is very, very common. I mean, those are unbeatable lodge. They are honestly like, they're just so well made that People abuse these, and you can actually pick one up for a great price, like five to ten dollars. And they might be, they might look like they're neglected, rusty as can be, a lot of carbon buildup. But you give those a good cleaning, and man, those they work so well. That's why, like I said, I'm a firm believer that Lodge does not make bad products at all. Jan Stewart says, "I'm in Alaska, and I had a friend who had chicken, chickens, and goats." Jan Stewart, you're in Alaska right now? My goodness. I'm sure it's really cold over there. Papa Dan says, never tried carbon steel cookware. Haven't even seen any, to my knowledge. Uh, um, yeah, Papa Dan, if you ever, uh, you know, get yourself a carbon steel skillet, make sure that it is either a lodge, because lodge actually does produce carbon steel cookware, either a lodge or a, um, one of the French manufacturers, which could be Debouillet, Matfer, or Maviel. Those are the best ones you can get, and they're fairly priced. They're not super expensive. Uh, it's not going to break the bank. And uh, unlike the boutique modern cast iron cook cookware that is available right now, it's not going to be in the 100s for a single pan. You're looking in the 40s to 50s, depending on the size, of course. Let's see. <clears throat> N2 Skiing says, I like my Debouillet, but like cast iron a lot better. Yep. Rick says he loves the matte furs. Yeah, I love matte furs too. Oh, actually, you know, right now that you guys are talking about uh, chicken fryers, Rick. Uh, send me a message on Instagram and he was telling me that he got a great deal at Walmart. So if it's okay with you, Rick, I'm going to let everybody know. Uh, if you guys are looking for a good deal, I would go to your local Walmart. You're not going to find this deal online. According to Rick, this is what he told me. Now I haven't confirmed this, but I, I believe Rick and uh, you guys can go to Walmart and they, uh, they are going to have a sale on Lodge Cookware. And I think he got a chicken fryer for shoot, I can't recall the price, but it was it was either ten or fifteen dollars. I can't recall the price, but Rick, if you uh, you're listening to me, uh, how much was it that you got your chicken fryer for? Let's see. Uh... <laughs> Cynthia Wesley says, "Don't hold back, Rick." Uh, do tell. I love your find. Papa Dan says, in my opinion, the Three Notch Lodge is equal to BSR Red Mountain cookware. I love both. Yeah, I love Red Mountain, uh, the Red Mountain series from uh, Birmingham Stoven Range. Uh, and I know, and I know for a fact that um, uh, Cast Iron Chaos is a fanatic to uh, BSR. He loves BSR and. I can see why I have a couple of BSR pans myself, and I also have a uh, deep, uh, is it a, no, it's not, well, chicken fryer, deep fryer, and man, that thing is as slick as can be, and it was a never used, never seasoned pan, man, that thing was great, and uh, I think I showcased it to you guys along with the Dutch oven that I found from Lodge, and uh, 
man, that thing is great. Like I said, just uh, BSR was uh, one of those companies that shamely went out of business, but I wish that they would have stuck around because they were producing great uh, cast iron cookware as well. Hippie Longshanks, thank you for the $5 donation. Uh, he does say, when are the LJ or Luis J carbon steel skill is coming out? Yeah, and I think I did mention that. That's a little venture that I'm planning on doing this uh, summer. So for this summer, I'm possibly going to do uh, maybe one or two pans uh, you know, out of carbon steel. And uh, I'm going to do my best to hand hammer it and uh, either weld on the handle or do rivets. But I am planning on doing something. And I'll let you guys know how well it does. All right, it says it's the end. Let me take a look. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're done. All right, so yeah, see, uh, 12 minutes, guys. This is quick. All right, let me get the let me get the cookie out. I hear it. I hear you. How do I stop this thing? All right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think that's good enough. So it's still going to be, well, maybe I should let it go a little bit longer. It still looks a little jiggly in the middle. So let's actually let it go for about uh, maybe three minutes, five minutes. Let's see. That usually, when, when stuff like this happens to me, um, and then sometimes like it overcooks, and then I'm like second guessing my time. But uh, let's do uh, three, three minutes. All right, three minutes. So this one's taking a little bit, maybe, you know, three minutes longer, hopefully. All right, let's see. Um, Corey Clark says, is my big cookie done? And not yet. Still jiggly in the middle. So uh, I was thinking that it was going to be done within the 12 minute mark, but this one's probably going to take about 15 minutes. The, that butter was cold. And maybe I did let the pan cool a little bit more than usual than last time. Because I think last time what I did was actually mix everything together first and then threw the eggs in last to prevent them from cooking, which I didn't this time. I let the pan cool a little bit more. Let's see. Hippie Longshanks, the bidding has begun. I know you guys are, uh, Rick says, put me on the list. Uh, yeah, you know what, guys? I, 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 I want to, obviously, I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to, you know, bring you guys along on this little venture that I'm going to do. And I, if I can actually do this, I might consider, you know, producing maybe, maybe about 10 skillets. Uh, if, if I can maybe produce 10. And if so, I'll, I'll give those out to you guys. I will do a raffle and we can give those out. Let's see. Corey Clark says, Jan Stewart, Ace Hardware has Lodge and Bass Pro Shop has Lodge. Yeah, actually, that's true. Um, Ace Hardware does have Lodge. They also have um, uh, Green Egg. They, they do carry not just tools or, you know, like things of that nature. They also carry uh, cast iron cookware and also grills, things of that nature. So that's, yeah, you can find, you can find Lodge anywhere, honestly. You can go, which I was surprised, but if you go to... Um, what is it? World Market. World Market actually has a huge, well, not necessarily huge, but a good portion of uh, Lodge cookware. They have a station where they have um, the chef skillet collections. They have, have the uh, like Dutch ovens. They have um, camping stuff. Sportsman Warehouse, another place you can find great cast iron cookware, uh, especially Lodge, um, Bass Pro Shop, or what's the other one? Um, Cabela's. Cabela's also has a lot of Lodge. They even carry now Finex. And obviously because Finex is owned by Lodge. So uh, I know that they, they carry that as well. Walmart as well has uh, Lodge cookware. Yeah, so um, Rick, Rick, did you even mention how much was the uh, that chicken fryer that you found? I know you sent me a message. Um, how much was it that you, you, uh, cause Rick actually found a great deal at Walmart for clearance. The lodge chicken fryer was like 10 or $15. I can't recall, but how much was it, Rick, that you got the lodge for? I hear you stove from this. All right. looks a little bit better. 
All right. So what we're going to do is actually not fully bake it because then it gets really, really hard. And I, I don't want a, a hard cookie. I want a soft cookie. Oh, yeah. So those three minutes were good enough or, you know, not good enough, but they were perfect. Let me move this out of the way. And uh, here's the cookie itself. Let me get in a little bit closer so you guys can see. So yeah, I mean, and that is the, the result you get. Um, I think it turned out great. And that's how easy you guys can make these at home. Like they're super easy. And what we're going to do is actually let this cool in the pan. So it's still with the residual heat of the pan, it's still going to cook the cookie. So the cookie is still um, getting cooked or baked. Um, and I mean, you can, you know, use a, a uh, either a toothpick, or whatever you have and check, but you can't really tell with a cookie, at least not in my experience. But see, I mean, nothing stuck to it. I don't know if you guys can see that. See, nothing stuck to it. So I, I did check it right now, and I mean, it's not wet. So it's it's baked thoroughly, but what I'm going to do is just let it sit there and let it continue baking for another 5 to 10 minutes before you cut into it. I wouldn't cut into it now because the cookie is going to be too soft, and it's just going to break apart. So I hope you guys uh, like this little recipe. Um, like I said, simple, fast, easy. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll show you guys. Um, actually, what we can do right now is add the uh, flaky salt. So um, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but I did buy myself some flaky salt. Uh, I think I have the bag or the box. You can actually find flaky salt like at, uh, well, I don't know if the East Coast or the Midwest has um, Rayleigh's. But I do know Rayleigh's is owned by, by Bel Air or Knob Hill. So if you go to any of those stores, which I like going to those stores, you can find this brand. Or even I think William and Sonoma might have it. But um, uh, sea salt flakes. So this is a brand that I like. And I bought this. They're flaky salt. And what I like to do is just add that flaky salt to the warm cookie. Just, you know, add some of those into there. And believe me, I mean, you guys might think that this is crazy, or I don't know if you guys actually do this or not. But obviously, you know, I've seen a lot of recipes, and they add the flaky salt. It, it gives it a totally different um, taste. I mean, in a good way. You get the sweetness and the saltiness. It makes a great combination. So with that, that is the uh, skillet cookie recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, simple, easy, and fast. Something you guys can do with uh, friends, family, or the kiddos. Now, if you guys are interested, real quick, I will show you guys the recipe ingredients and measurements. So uh, the only difference here here on this is that instead of three quarter cup of uh, firmly packed dark brown sugar, I just used a half a cup for both the sugars. Uh, otherwise, I feel like it's too sweet. And I, I'm, I like sweets, but I'm not a big fan of sweets. Like uh, that's not my vice. My vice is food in general, uh, or you know, uh, sugary drinks. But I've cut down on the sugary drinks. Um, I, I mean, when I drink my coffee, that that thing is pretty sweet. So. Uh, you know, my vice is those things instead of like desserts. I'm not a big fan of the uh, of desserts, but my wife and my kiddos love the uh, skillet cookie, so I make it for them. <clears throat> Papa Dan says, "What is flaky salt?" I'm a true uh, Louisiana country boy. Flaky salt, so it's just salt, um, but they crystallize it in a in a way where it's a uh, when you take a bite of that that flaky salt, it's not a huge saltiness like punch to your mouth. It's uh, a very mild, and it's almost like um, crunchy, like a, like if it was hardened candy or candy for that matter. So, uh, but, but salty, obviously. So it's crystallized salt, and they that's how they make it. They just crystallize it in a way that it turns into these flakes. So if you guys have never seen or tried flaky salt, I mean, give it a go. It, it it's great. And especially on desserts.
Cynthia Wesley says, I, I believe you too, Jen. I can taste the edge of the crust. I know, guys, the crust is great. So like I said, if you let this sit here for that amount of time, um, once it cools down, you can serve yourself a piece of that cookie, and man, it's going to be great. And you can tell that um, none of it is obviously going to have any issue coming out because I don't know if you guys can see it here, but the edges are pulling apart from the pan or from the skillet itself. So, you know, I, I know for a fact that it's turned out great. And um, let me show you guys my cookie from yesterday. So these are the, this is a skillet cookie that I made yesterday in the same pan. So I made it also in the Victoria pan. And um, man, I'll tell you guys, this, this cookie is nice and soft. It's not, it's not dry. And I also added the flaky salt on this one. So if you guys are interested, yeah, you know, and the, the flavor is not too sweet. Like I said, if you do more, then you're going to have, I think, a really sweet cookie. Um, so I, I would suggest half a cup instead of the three-quarter cup. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for tonight. I hope you guys had a good time. Let me know what you guys think. You guys um, are going to give this a try. Please let me know. I want to know if you guys try this cookie. Uh, you know, find a way to let me know either in the comments or if you guys send me any messages. Um, I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and on TikTok. So, you know, find a way to send me a photo, a picture. I, I would appreciate it. Uh, but with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I know it's late in the East Coast. So, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And with that, I will catch you guys uh, next week on a live. All right, guys, good night to everybody. Stay safe, everybody.